Great to see you here. This is again a video about algorithms. We've already discussed simple algorithms, uh, searching algorithms. We've been looking at a sorting algorithm. And one of the elements which is important here is what we call a greedy algorithm. And greedy algorithms can be very interesting. However, they don't always have an optimal solution. Now, what a greedy algorithm? Now, a greedy algorithm is an algorithm that is not optimizing for the entire solution of the problem, but it's optimizing each step that it can do. For example, if you have different trips to do, it will take the shortest trip, it will take the easiest combination, the most convenient one. And this type of algorithms we call basically greedy algorithms. Now, the element that we don't know is that is the solution optimal or not? Now, we don't know if we have an optimal solution, but at least we have a solution which is acceptable. And in some cases, this may be enough for us to work with because it's not always possible to find an optimal solution easily. The acceptable solution can be used. In some cases, like I said, it can be a very good replacement of the optimal solution. Now, basically what we can do when we have a uh, greedy algorithm, we can try to find if the solution is an optimal solution. So we can try to find out, is this greedy algorithm really an optimal solution or not? Or we can find a counter example to prove that the greedy algorithm is not optimal. Now we are going to look at some example here. The first example is changing euro coins. Now you know, or perhaps you don't know, we have euro coins available at 2 euro, 1 euro, 50 euro cent, 20 euro cent, 10 euro cent, 5 euro cent, 2 euro cent, and 1 euro cent. And we want to use these coins to make a certain number of euros. Let's consider that we have 3 euro and 68 cents that we want to split. And we want to have the lowest possible of number of coins. Now, first of all, we can look at the steps 1 and 2, where we use 2 euro and 1 euro. So basically, now we still have to look at 68 euro cent. Now, 68, we can use the 50 cents, which gives us a remainder of 18 cents. And we can continue. We can find here the 10 cents. So we have 8. Then we have the next solution is 5 cents, 2 cents, and finally 1 cent. So basically, we have 2 euro, 1 euro. We have 50 cent, 10 cent, 5 cent, 2 cent, and 1 cent. So basically, we have 7 coins to make this. Now we can prove if this is an optimal solution or not. And in this context, we could say, yes, this is an optimal solution. Let's now have a look at dollar coins. Now the dollar coins, they are a little bit different because in the US they have still the $1, the $5 bills, and they only use quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. And if you're not used to uh, what these are, a quarter is 25 cents, which is logical. A dime is 10 cents, a nickel is 5 cents, and a penny is 1 cent. Now, when we look at a greedy algorithm solution, for 30 cents, we would find a combination of a quarter and a nickel. So we have two elements here. But what happens if the set of coins that we have available is changed? Imagine we don't have those 25, 10, 5, and 1 cent coins, but imagine we don't have a nickel. So the nickel, the 5 cent, is disappearing. And now we look at the same case. We look at the $30, so we take the 25. Uh, we have still 5 cent remaining. There is no nickel, so we're basically going at five pennies. So we have a quarter and five pennies, which is in fact six coins. But do we have a better solution? Yes, yes, we could have taken three dimes. So you see that in this case, when we look at the greedy algorithm, it would not give us the optimal combination and we could find a better combination. Now, it's also very important when we look 
at this combination here, there may be a reason why the people have these denominations of the coins. And selecting those denominations will help us to work with the coins in a different way. Now, when we have the greedy algorithm, the greedy algorithm is not going to reason like we are doing. So we can see what we do. We can look at a, we can say, well, we have 30 cents. We can use uh, three dimes instead of uh, 25 cents and five pennies. But basically the computer doesn't do that. So greedy algorithms can be interesting, but you have to be aware that not all of them provide an optimal solution. So this was everything I wanted to say about those algorithms. We will have more topics related to algorithms. Algorithms will pop up everywhere, but we will study algorithms in the algorithm course, which is a different course related to IT, of course. Now what we're going to do in the next sessions, it's about the growth of functions. We will be looking at the introduction of the big O, big Omega, big Theta, and we are looking at the time uh, complexity of the algorithms. Not only time is important, we also have to consider the space, and we can basically uh, think about algorithms in two ways. How long does it take to complete the algorithm? And the second element would be how much memory does the algorithm need? So this was everything for this video. You're doing a great job and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.